In this step-by-step -step guide, I'm going to show how to run uh, the analysis in JASP about comparing the mean of our sample with a mean of a population of values. This analysis is called one sample t-test. So let's open the data first. So open and I'm, I'm going to go to recent files because I've got I've used the data recently but otherwise you go to computer and you browse and you find the data set where you uh, in the folder you stored it but I'm going to go to recent files and Galton data so this is the data in which Galton measured the height in inches of parents and children so we are going to pretend we don't have this data so we, we are going to pretend that we only have the information that the mean of um, the parents is 68.308 inches so we've got that information only and but we do have the data on children so what we want to know whether the the sample we have with the children comes from the same uh, population of values where the the parents high of, of parents height heights and the data we have is comprises 928 individuals so we go to the bottom of the of the data set and we see that we've got 928 individuals now why uh, why uh, um, why are we using this um, is it common this well it is common sometimes we read an article that tells us that they 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 have in some record the mean of some population and perhaps the standard deviation and we don't have the data we just have that information so we want to compare our sample to that to that population so it is uh, it is a very a very um, important possibility that that we have to run this type of analysis so we go to t-test and we use the classical one sample t-test and we are going to use the children data we pretend that the parent data doesn't exist and immediately JASP calculates the t-test and but before going to this let's uh, go through the possibilities here so in terms of tests we got a the um, the tick for a student test student t-test which is the one that we are going to use in some other circumstances we may have to use different tests now test value is the value which we, to which we want to compare our sample and sometimes the test value is zero but in this case it's not so the the value that we want to compare our sample with is the mean of 68.308 which is the information we have about the mean of parents so 68.308 eight and we press enter and that already changed the one sample t test now this is very important alternative hypothesis we can have the, the alternative hypothesis that our sample has a different mean than the sample of uh, than the population of parents that is this is a non-directional hypothesis and um, if we don't have any reason to have a directional hypothesis this is what we have to use so this is the default if we have reasons but 
there has to be strong justifications to decide to uh, propose the alternative hypothesis as that the children's height will be higher than that of their parents, then the alternative hypothesis would be this one and we have to tick there. So if we have a justification to indicate that the mean of children will be lower than that of their parents, then we tick on here. That will change the sampling distribution. We are going to look, we are going to use the same distribution, but we are going to look when we said, remember that we mentioned the p-value that we are going to obtain is the probability of observing the the statistic that we are uh, we calculate, which in this case will be the t-score, or a more extreme value in the sampling distribution of that statistic. So now the more extreme value, when we have the alternative hypothesis is just different, we don't say whether it is lower or higher, then more extreme we should look at the two two extremes. So if we've got a, a t test that is three, then more extreme would be three or higher than three and minus three or lower than minus three. Now if we choose the directional hypothesis to be larger and we need justification, then we are going to look when we say more extreme values will be only values higher than 3. And when we uh, have a justification to have the alternative hypothesis that says that this sample will have a lower mean than that of the population we are comparing with, then when we say more extreme, it would be if we obtain a minus 3, then would be lower than minus 3, but not, not on the other extreme. Okay, so um, then that is the t-test that determines the significance. So the t-score is minus 2.656. So how do we interpret the t-score? Well, remember that we went through the z-score. And the z-score, if it is negative, this is that, that, that there are scores lower than zero, which is the mean of the distribution. Well, in the t-distribution, the, the mean is also zero, or, or the center of the distribution is zero. So minus 2.656 means that the mean in our sample is lower than that of the population. Now, the t-distribution changes according to the degrees of freedom. So we've got 927 degrees of freedom, which is one less than the number of observations in our sample. And we've got the p-value is 0 0.008. Now, remember that we have to determine in advance what will be our significance level alpha which is the threshold that we are going to use. A typical threshold used in psychology is 0 0.05. So the p-value we obtained is 0 0.008, which is lower than 0 0.05. So in this case, we are going to say that this result is significant and we reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there are no differences in the mean of this sample with the mean of the population, which is 68.308. Now, I want to show you something. When, when we've got a very large sample, this result is significant, whereas the difference in, in, um, in height is not, is not very much. So if we get to these additional statistics, we go to location parameter and confidence interval. So it shows that's the mean difference. And the mean difference is 0 0.22 inches. 
Now, the confidence interval of that difference is um, minus 0 0.382 to minus 0 0.057. So basically, this is a range of possible values uh, that, uh, that we expect the mean difference to be in this comparison of our sample with that of the population and and those values are lower than both values are lower than zero that means that indicates that uh, the mean difference is um, lower than zero or suggests and but even though it's lower than zero it's just 0 0.2 two inches Okay, so effect size is a standardized uh, version of the mean difference. So coins D will do the mean difference divided by some standard deviation. We're going to leave it there. Um, we can have more descriptive statistics, just the mean of children, standard deviation and standard error of the mean. 